Hello everybody, welcome to Red Tool House. I'm Troy. Today uh, we're going to try to open up some of our forest edge here on our hillside pasture that our pigs are in. They're actually standing right here beside me. Mike may be picking them up. But I'm trying to get this pushed back because we've got a lot of ivy, we've got a lot of vine, we've got a lot of poison ivy, we've got a lot of um, multiflora rose, we've got sycamore, we've got elm, what else we got? We got all kinds of stuff. We're going to try to clear it out and we're going to see just how much poison ivy that I get into. Uh, and then we'll even show at the end if I'm all swollen up like a puffer fish, then you guys can point and laugh. So come along. So you can see the, uh, the wee lads here are working this edge pretty good. Uh, and then right here is the fence. So they haven't come up quite to the very edge, but they're working on it. But we've got some areas that are just so dense here that I need to clear them out because they have a lot of, there's some multiflora rows in there. And my goodness, there's Virginia creeper. I see poison ivy. I think there's some poison oak back in there as well. So we've got a variety of stuff that uh, really gives me the old heebie-jeebies, but <clears throat> it's gotta come out. And we're also going to clear out these sycamores too. There's a lot of sycamores that are growing up in what used to be our old chicken lot. So I gotta get that out of there. And if we get real froggy, then we'll take out some of this uh, autumn olive as well. The plan is to function stack with what we're doing here. So what I cut down, I'm gonna drag up here and we're gonna run through the chipper and chip it into our trailer. And I really want green wood chips right now. And green, I mean leaves and green vine and, and all of that stuff. I want it in this chipping run because I'm going to incorporate it up in our chicken church. And I like having that green element in there because it gives the chicken something to go through. There's bugs, there's all that kind of fun stuff in it. So it gives them a little bit of stuff to play with, but also breaks down a lot quicker.
This pollen is so bad. How bad is it? That I had a bee fly up my nose and come out with his pollen sacks completely full. That was too much like work. Missed the trailer a little bit there. <laughs> Got to remedy that. Mm. So just that little stretch of green trees along the edge of our forest area there has created this much wood chip. Now again, this is so much green stuff, it's gonna break down. So if this was just all dead trees that we were chipping, and it would, would probably be a lot less full in the trailer. But like I said, I really like this for the chickens. They enjoy it thoroughly. Only one little bit of bad news on a sad note is I was chipping, had a treetop there, that very last red bud that was on that spot. I'm getting ready to put the top in the chipper and look down and there's a, there's a little sparrow's nest upside down two little baby sparrows in it. So I, uh, I thought maybe if I put them back in the tree, because I see the mom over there, she's, she's looking for them. So I put them back up in another tree. No, I, I don't know if it's an old wives tale or not, but if you touched a nest, the, the mom would abandon it. Comment below, let me know what you think of that. And those of you guys that are parented of orphan birds like that or disturbed nests, of course, by the time you comment on this video, the birds will either be fine with their mama or they'll be dead. So <laughs> that's, the, that's the tragedy of YouTube delay. <laughs> so I'm um, just going to fill this up and leave this trailer here because we're almost out of daylight. And I am absolutely covered in poison ivy. So we're going to run and take a, take a really good shower. I like to use dishwasher soap, like Donya, the, the grease removing soap, because it does a good job breaking down that aerosol oil that poison ivy and poison oak contain. But we'll see. I've got a lot of scratches, but we'll see here in a couple days. I'll do an update here at the end of the video. A couple of days to see if I'm all broken out in Itchville or not. So it's amazing what you see or what you find when you clear stuff out. I had forgotten that the multiflora and poison ivy had taken over the old chicken pasture area so badly that I abandoned. So there's three T posts, actually four T posts, and some fence in there. So we're going to toss some uh, we're going to toss some pig feed in there over the next couple days and see if they can eat some of that down. They're actually hanging out down there anyway because there's a bunch of leaves. They've been eating the leaves like crazy. But uh, came out pretty clean. It's definitely nice having those sycamores out. Now those sycamores will start growing back, but we'll uh, just keep clipping them. May keep throwing feed around the stumps to see if they can uproot them. But sycamore stump, that little sycamore stump right there probably has a root system all the way down the creek. <laughs> All right, so fast forward almost a week actually and the pigs are doing a great job getting this hillside cleared off and as I dump feed into these individual spots then they do an incredible job cleaning all that up and I'm going to dump right here where I've got a lot of multiflora and some poison ivy and some other vines so I'll bring you in closer. 
This is where I dump feed yesterday. And also right here. And today I'm gonna dump right there. Managed to make it out with zero poison ivy. I did get a lot of briar scratches, which I don't know if, oh, there's some fresh blood. I don't know that if, um, if you guys run into this with multiflora rose, but it, when it's, uh, when the briars get into me, even if they don't break off, if it's just a little puncture, it seems like they get infected. I don't know if I'm allergic to it, if there's a, if there's a, you know, extra bacteria or something on it, but interesting. Okay, so now I need to get this trailer hitched up and get it taken up to the chickens. I'll see if I fouled myself here. I fouled it, get it. Oh, this is the great thing about having a trailer that's balanced. <laughs> there we go. I think it's sitting on the trailer with the rain that we had. And that's actually steaming. And it's, I don't know if you can see the steam coming off of that. But it's, uh, it's in the high 70s right now and it's still steaming. That's, yeah, that feels like that's about 100 degrees, 105 degrees. It's crazy how that starts to break down. So I'm really impressed. Obviously the rain we had today helped them uh, tear this down some more, but just look how clear that is all the way back to where they're feeding now. So we've got a nice clear edge there and I believe in about a week, we'll see how it goes as I work my way down. I believe in about a week, two days before I move, I'm going to throw some grass seed in so they can kind of trump that down and then we'll move them over to this pasture here so they can work on that um, and then let this come back, let this rest. But really happy with how um, you know, chainsaw and pigs can really make light work of a lot of poison ivy, a lot of vine, a lot of thick, thick nasty stuff you don't want to work on too much. Well, I want to remind everybody, uh, if, you're, if you're into pigs, pastured pigs, don't forget about our podcast. It's called the Pastured Pig Podcast. Uh, we have about 102 episodes out now, and we interview pastured pig producers from across the country. So be sure to check that out. I'll put a link below in the, uh, in the video description. Well, appreciate everybody watching. Y'all take care.